So if you'd be so kind as, uh, if you haven't done so already, just to make sure those cards are equally distributed throughout the pew with the, with the pens uh, for our annual DSA. Uh, but I, I, w I would like to talk about um, last year, uh, back in March, um, Monsignor Knox called me and told me that, uh, uh, you know, Father Father Clayter was going to be moving, and we knew that you know, that was that was expected. But then, then he threw that wrinkle in a little while later and said that, uh, you know, Father Jack was going to be leaving too because of his job with the vo taking over vocations, and that wasn't expected. So uh, we we're kind of short-staffed there at the change. Remember that it was just. Father, they both left, and Father Pacer came, praise God, and and so we were without a, a priest uh, for a while, and it wasn't supposed to be that way. So when Monsignor Knox called and said that Father Jack was leaving, um, he also said, you know, but we've got somebody else who's coming, and he'll be there very soon. All right, so Fa Father Arnold Rellis is coming from the Philippines. He's a wonderful man, and and uh, he, he can't wait to, to come and minister at, at St. Patrick. And it's like, well, that's great. Um, and so uh, we waited and we waited. And, and uh, the Monsignor Nas calls and says, you know, there's, there's some visa issues. Uh, so it's going to be another delay. And, and so that's, you know, June. And then we're into July. And then you know, all of a sudden he calls again. He says, "Yep, it, he's, it's going to be some. It's going to be some more time." And you know, there's a, some some issue between this current administration and uh, religious worker visas, and they were just it was really difficult uh, to get uh, Arnold uh, over here. And uh, and and uh, you know, finally, uh, you know, he and I had been corresponding by email, and finally he called. And he, he goes, I, I'm just calling. This is like in September. He goes, I'm just calling to let you know that I'm actually a real person, you know, that, I, that there's, there's actually somebody coming. Uh, it, was, it was just a relief to hear his voice. And, and, and I said, you know, uh, Arnold, uh, I tell you what. Uh, since you know you're having all these visa issues over there, why don't you just get yourself to Mexico and get to the border, and I'll pick you up in El Paso. <laughs> It'll be much easier. <laughs> uh, but he got his visa shortly thereafter and showed up. So it was a, it was an October evening night. It's probably around nine o'clock, and uh, the, the the great thing about it was his all the Filipino. There's a large uh, contingent of Filipino uh, uh, priests in our diocese, uh, and they're they're just wonderful people, uh, great great priests, and just wonderful uh, uh, servants' hearts, and uh, and they watch out for each other. So here's Arnold coming from a place he doesn't know anybody here, uh, and, he, and he's he's only been here in the past doing missionary appeals for just brief moments. And now he's, he's left his family, he's just here. And so the, the guys picked him up and brought him and brought him into the house. And, and he's, oh, this is, because, you know, we have a big rectory over there. He says, this is a big house. And I said, yeah, there's a lot of rooms. And here's your room, and here's the garage, and here's the kitchen, and here's the chapel. And we went through the whole thing. And there's a, there's a place for you here, basically. All, the, all of us kind of gathered around him and brought him into the house and showed him and said, this is your place now. This is your room. This is this is what the Lord has brought you to. You know, um, I marveled at it, and I still do. And he's got a family over there, uh, and you know, right now his mom's been very sick, and and he, you know, I, I hear him talking to his family uh, late at night on the phone, and uh, he's got that world over there. But he's got this world here now, and he's embraced it completely, without any hesitation. Just all in, and just joyful spirit, huh? You know, as I said, he had been here in the past doing missionary appeals just for a month or two around the United States. Uh, and then he, but to do what? To get money. Like, you know, the missionary guys that come here once a year, he did that for, for a couple months. And to get money to send back to the Philippines where they need it. So he comes over, 
We give him the help he needs. He goes home. But here's the thing. The bishop then turns around and does for us what we did for them. We need priests. They need money. We gave it to them. We need priests. He gave us a priest. And he's given us all these Filipino priests. How it works. How we take care of each other. See, this idea of many rooms, it's, it's talking about the temple. The temple was a massive complex in Jerusalem, and it had many rooms, hundreds of rooms for all sorts of different things. There are many rooms in my father's house. But now Jesus is no longer speaking about the temple. He's speaking about himself. He's the temple. And the, room, and the rooms that he speaks of in this new temple are us. There's a place for us in the body of Christ. We make up the body of Christ. We living stones make up the body of Christ. There are many rooms, and one of them is yours. And in that room, you do the work of the Lord. You do service, you do love, you do your families, you do your business, you do everything that you're about. But it's in the temple of the Lord. And it's by His love and His direction, His service. So that it can be done with joy. Think about all the things you do. And the capacity in all those activities of your life, whatever they are, to have those, to have those moments be moments of joy. Now, are they always? No. Sometimes they're very challenging. But the key is, you know, we look at Christ and we know what to do. We look at Christ and we know what to do. We love. And in loving, and in loving, we are able to do the work of Christ in the world. We can be like Father Arnold and all the missionaries and all the people who have ever lived in this parish and who have done everything in this parish to build it and to make it thrive and to make it grow. Huh? Uh, it's our job. You know, to, to know that I have a vocation in the church and my vocation, as St. Therese would say, is love. So love selflessly like Christ. That is your place. That is your room. That is your job. That is your vocation. That is your apostolate. So today when we, uh, we think of Father Arnold and all that he has given up to be with us, we also are mindful because of the joyful spirit of his heart of how much he has received, 30, 60, and 100 fold because of his love for us. Now, brothers and sisters, Real briefly, uh, we, our DSA, you guys did an amazing job last year. We made our target. We went over it. So all I'd ask you to do, I'm not going to belabor it. You have your envelopes in the pews. Just do last year uh, or do this year what you did last year, and we'll be fine. Uh, if you can give a little bit more this year, please do, because there'll be some people who aren't in a position to do that again for whatever circumstances. But what I do ask, if you didn't give anything last year, at least give a little bit to say that we've all got skin in the game and that we're all a member of this family and that I have, a, I have a room in this house too. I have a role in this temple too. I have a vocation in the body of Christ too. So everybody does something. Do more if you can to make up for those who won't be able to. Uh, and, and, and all again, we trust. Uh, do not let your hearts be troubled. Have faith in God. Have faith also in me, says the Lord.